Good morning, YouTube viewers. It's Kermit's Ghost, and we're dealing with the W's of the collection today. I've got the window shut. It's about 30 degrees. It's like uh, the gates to hell in here. I've got a fan going, so if you can hear that, I apologise. There's about 160-ish W's. I'll do these three first. Uh, Studio Ghibli, Ghibli, Whisper of the Heart. This is number 11. Wind Rises, The Wind Rises, this is number 20. And when Marley was there, this is number 22. Got my sunglasses on, because um, it's very bright. You may not see it, but it is bright. And it's this all reading glasses. I'm, I went for the shades today. Here we go, W. Josh Brolin, brilliant. Um, you've got Richard Dreyfus in this, amongst the others. I can't really, can't really see. Uh, yeah, you got people in there. Audrey Hepburn, uh, Hep Hepburn, Audrey Hepburn. Wait until dark. It's got Anna Arkin in this now. Um, Audrey Hepburn, her character is recently blind, living alone, and uh, Anna Arkin is after something in her house. In fact, it's heroin in a doll. So, why? Wow. It's a uh, H and B Premium. It's number. 72 from 1967. Waiting. Great comedy. Uh, Ryan Reynolds. Um, you got Chi McBride in this. I think Anna Faris. Uh, yeah, Anna Faris. Justin Long. Dane Cook. Funny as hell this is. Uh, you wouldn't want to eat in that restaurant. The Antics of the, the Staff. The Wall. Aaron uh, Taylor Johnson. And John Cena as well. John Cena. You John Cena fans. Wallace and Gromit, Curse of the Wear Rabbit. This is a brilliant, and that's not an understatement, this is a brilliant film. It's um, the plasticine stop animation. If you like uh, the, the likes of Grand Day Out, um, Matter of Life and Death, uh, The Wrong Trousers, you're going to love this. It's a, a feature length, great British cast, voiceovers obviously. Just a fantastic film. Curse of the Wear Rabbit. I'd be good if you've got young kids Halloween. Wall E. Um, yeah, Disney, Pixar. Great. Love this film. Right up to the point humans were introduced. Should have left it as a robot. Fantastic animation in that. Walking with Dinosaurs. I've heard there is a 3D version of this, so I might uh, trade up for that one at a later date. A Walk to Remember. This is a beautiful film. Australian release uh, not out in the UK I don't think it's out anywhere other than Australia but I could be wrong um, Mandy Warren uh, Mandy Moore and Shane West is one of those sort of teenager has um, a dying illness a terminal illness and strikes up a love friendship very moving film very very good one of the best ones uh, Walk of Shame this is uh, Elizabeth Banks if I remember uh, yes Elizabeth Banks James Marsden Walk in the Woods. It's funny. This is um, Robert Redford and Nick Nolte. Uh, Emma Thompson's in this, but she's not in it a lot. Um, Robert Redford has like a... a he's had all his... Um, in, what am I trying to say? Uh, he has all his goals more or less fulfilled in his life. So he wants one last, like, hurrah. So he decides to go across the Appalachian Trail in America and uh his wife i believe wants him to have a partner to go along so he calls up nick nolte they had their, like a, a friendship before but they've, they've fallen out and it's a really good film double act and kind of a road movie of sorts but on foot walk in the clouds with keanu reeves I must remember to show you the covers <laughs> usually you me down the walker this is a film with um Woody Harrelson, who else is in this? Uh, Lily Tom Tomlin, she's from Nine to Donna, well, lots of things, but Nine to Five, Lauren Bacall, Christopher Scott Thomas, and William Defoe. Walker. Walk amongst the tombstones. Uh, this is a formulaic um, a Liam Neeson film. Pretty good, it's good, it's good action film. You watch this and you've got a fear of heights. Be warned, okay? It's 3D and you're looking down. It's about the guy, the French guy that um, pull a wire between the two towers and walk across it. 
played by uh, Gordon Levitt. Gordon Joseph Gordon Levitt. That was him. Waking Ned Divine. Um, this is a German release, hence the title is different. But it's Waking Ned Divine, and it's the story of this guy. I think I've got a Phoenix in Ireland. It could be Scotland. Could be. Could be either one. Waking Ned. Uh, Ned is a lottery winner, and he gets his numbers, his lottery numbers come up and he promptly dies. He's in a chair holding a ticket dead. His friend comes to check on him one day, sees he's got the winning ticket and decides to take his identity on because uh, Ned has written his name on the back of the ticket. So it has to be investigated. Is that Ned Divine? So the authorities get involved. Pretty soon word gets out that uh, Ned's dead and this guy's taken on his identity but it's only like a small village so they all have to be involved to get the one over on Camelot Wall Street this is a good film uh, very good film uh, Michael Douglas as a Wall Street scumbag Charlie Sheen is like prodigy and uh, it's all about insider trading and you have uh, Wall Street Money Never Sleeps the sequel that came out, it must be about 20 years later, at least 20 years. Uh, best bit about this film for, for me was the trailer, and you see him coming out of prison, because surprise, surprise. If you haven't seen this by now, you should know. Michael Douglas goes to prison in the uh, sort of opening shots of this. He's coming out of prison, collecting his belongings. He's got the big 80s mobile phone, you know, all that sort of stuff. It's very good. It's got Kerry Mulligan in this, uh, Shia LaBeouf. Uh, Kerry Mulligan is. Gordon the Gecko is Michael Douglas, his daughter, and Shia LaBeouf wants to date his daughter and marry him. But uh, he gets entrapped with Michael Douglas with insider trading again. Waltz with Bashir, this is an animated film. Wanted, uh, comic, kind of, I think this was a comic book adaptation. You have uh, James McAvoy, who's a like. He's a nervy, sort of, uh, got no get up and go. He's being put upon by all his friends. Actually, his friend is, um, not his friend, his colleague is uh, Chris Pratt in this. Quite sort of unrecognisable when he first sort of went into films. Anyway, uh, so James McAvoy is just sort of nerdy, going about his business, sort of uh, hiding away from any anxiety. And then he meets up with Angelina Jolie in a, a convenience store. There's a shootout. He's out racing, and anyway, she tells him that he's this like super assassin. He's from a line of super assassins. Morgan Freeman's in this as well. It's a good, good action film. If it's a comic book, I don't know why they didn't do a sequel. Maybe it didn't do very well in the cinema. I don't know. Wonder us. I bought this because Paul uh, Rudd is in this and Alan Alda. War. I've not seen this yet. I think this is the only uh, Jason Statham film that I haven't seen. War and Peace. This is a uh, American import. Audrey Hepburn and Henry Fonda. War and Peace. Warcraft in three. Is it three D? Yes, in three D. Warcraft after the game. War Dogs. This look at Jonah Hill. He's lost a lot of weight since then. He he looks completely different now. Um, Miles Teller as well as in that. War for the Planet, is it For the Planet? War for the Planet of the Apes. This is the, oh, I think this is the last one, isn't it, with uh, Woody Harrelson. Very good movie. Um, a good conclusion to the set. Brilliant set. Trilogy. War Inc. with John Cusack, Hilary Duff, Marissa Tomei. She don't, does she do any films now, Mr. Tomei? Joan Cusack, his sister, that is John's sister. She actually plays, uh, there's a voice of um, Jesse in Toy Story. And Ben Kingsley. Warm Bodies. I saw this at the cinema and uh, it's a good movie. It's Teresa Palmer, Nicholas Holt, John Malkovich. And it's um, this guy. He's a zombie and he kind of, sort of comes back to life and uh, communicates and falls in love with her. And it's pretty good. War Games. This is a brilliant movie. I saw this actually a couple of weeks ago and it really does hold up. Uh, it's got the late John Spencer from West Wing. He's at the start. It's a, he's one of the nuclear um, key turners. Oh, my pardon me, he says over the pants. 
Also, his partner in the nuclear silo is Michael Madsen, you know, the guy who cut off the ear of the, um, the copper in Reservoir Dogs. But beside that, there's Matthew Broderick, uh, Ali Sheedy, and they kind of, they do kind of both hack uh, the, the government computer and, or the Whopper computer that's sort of running simulations of World War Three. Great, great film. I love that film. Absolutely love it. War Horse. Uh, my wife won't watch this. She thinks it's cruel, even though she's not seen it. Saw it at the cinema. Loved it. I thought it was really good. Um, the story of a horse and his owner. Not so much his owner, more of the horse, really. And But the owner's trying to find the horse. He's, uh, he's The horse is enlisted into World War One, And is it World War One or Two? I'm pretty sure it's World War One. And it's all about the, the horse's exploits and the guy trying to get his horse back. War of the Roses. You've got Danny DeVito. This was actually directed by Danny DeVito as well. Michael Douglas, Kathleen Turner. They're getting divorced, hence the War of the Roses. And poor little Danny DeVito's in the middle of it. War on Everyone. That is uh, uh, Michael Penner and Alexander Skarsgård. War of the Worlds. Love this film. Uh, it's quite a grainy film, but it was filmed like that. Uh, so if you look at the transfer on this, you think, oh, that's crap. It's like that on all the uh, all the copies. The only thing I don't like about this film is Dakota Fanning screaming pretty much all the way through it. But it's great effects, great story. I read the book. The book. I wish they'd do one of the book in Victorian England. That would be really good, I think. Warrior. Now, this is Tom Hardy and Joel Edgerton. Ed Edgerton. I never say his name. I just call him Joel. Tom and Joel. Now, Joel is a maths, I think he's just a maths teacher, or just a teacher, let's put it that way. And Tom is a soldier, but he's not in the army at, during this film. He's out of the army. But I won't give why he's out of the army. Anyway, um, Joel is a bit hard work for cash. He's going to lose his house, so he does a bit of uh, cage fighting, underground cage fighting, to win some money. Anyway, this big competition comes up, like the ultimate cage fighter. He goes in for it, and so does Tom Hardy. Now, their father is Nick Nolte, old, uh, old Gruffalo, his voice. Um, can't understand a word he's saying, but uh, he trains up Tom Hardy, or Tom, and uh, eventually the brothers do fight each other. Great fight. One of the best fights on celluloid. The Watch. Funny alien invasion. Ben Stiller, um, Jonah Hill, Vince Vaughn. I'm not a big fan of Vince Vaughn, but he's really good in this. Uh, Richard Ayoade is brilliant in this. He's so funny. It's like, uh, well, I'm not going to give it away, but it's um, the dance scene with the alien, and he's <laughs> and it wakes up, and he's feeling that up. Very, very good. Watch the watch. Give the watch a go. A watcher. This is James Spader and Keanu Reeves. Watchmen. Another. Uh, comic adaptation this is a special edition it's got three discs in this and one of them one of the discs isn't actually uh, a digital copy disc it's that old but I don't know why I didn't make more of these because I love this great characters in this Meline Ackerman dark hair <laughs> Walter Babies this is uh, still sealed um, in a white case James Mason in that one and Bernard Cribbins Walter Boy, uh, yeah, Adam Sandler. This is about when I, when I say he used to do good films. I do like, I know, Pixels. Um, I do like that one. <laughs> and um, Grown Ups, I like that one too. And Cob I'd like his films. Cobbler, I like that too. Walter Diviner, this is uh, Russell Crowe. Walter for Elephants with Reese Witherspoon and Robert Patterson. He who was going to be Batman. You've also got Christopher Waltz in that. The Water Horse. This is a good. This is like the tenor of the Loch Ness monster, sort of an origin story, if you like. It doesn't actually say he's a Loch Ness monster, but it's set in Scotland, and you got a big monster living in the water. Set during the war, a uh, cute little kid finds an egg, a big dinosaur egg sort of thing, or dragon egg, or whatever the hell it is, and there you go. Good family film. Water World. Great Kevin Costner movie. Uh, this was the, the like the box set with the booklet, and it's got three cuts of this film. Um, two of them are pretty close there's like 176, 178 minutes and there's one like 130 something minutes, I think that's the times anyway uh, the Ulysses cut is the longest one, I've watched that but I'm pretty sure I saw that 
before because I don't remember anything being cut out. Great movie. I'd say underrated, but a lot of people have said how much they love it, so maybe it wasn't underrated. The Wave. Wayne's World. Funny, I need to get the second one. I'm not sure the second one is region free, um, but I need to get it. The Way, this is a remarkable film. It is um, Michael Sheen, not Michael Sheen, Martin Sheen, sorry, and um, you've got James Nesbitt in this, but it's uh, Emilio Estevez. Now, Emilio Estevez is a loser in his father's eyes, and uh, he was going to take this like spiritual walk. I think it's across Spain. I'm pretty sure it's across Spain like a pilgrim's trail and uh, he dies before he gets the chance so or he dies when he's on the route I can't remember which way around but the father goes and uh, has the son cremated and he realizes you know life's too short he should have given him a second chance he was turning his life around so he decides to walk the trail uh, with his son's ashes and it's about the people it's another journey uh, road road movie sort of thing but on foot again great film it's not a lot you know not action or anything like that. it's just a good character development film that's a German release called The Way didn't get a UK release surprise surprise uh, The Way Back I think that's based on a true story Peter Weir film isn't it uh, yeah good cast in that you've got uh, Saucy Ronan uh, I know LJ likes um, Colin Farrell Ed Harris Ed Harris Way Way Back another great cast Steve Carell in that film. W.E. This is a film that was directed by, I think, Madge, wasn't it? Old uh, Madonna. Uh, Madonna. We Are Marshall, Matthew McConaughey. Um, and that's the guy from Lost, isn't it? Matthew Fox. Sports film. I love sports films. We Bought a Zoo. I'm pretty sure. No, I know this is a true story. And I can't remember, I think this is set in the States, um, but the real one is set in the UK. Actually, uh, I think down in Devon. I'm, could be wrong now. Um, Matt Damon, Matt Damon, and Scarlett Johansson. Little girls, cute as a button in that. Wedding Crashers, good com, rom com. Christopher Walken is in this, Owen Wilson, and Vince Bone. Vince Bone. Wedding Planet, another rom com. I do like a rom com. Jennifer Lopez, Matthew McConaughey. Wedding Ringer. I've not seen this one, but I bought this because a uh, big fan of Big Bang Theory, and I do like Kaylee Cuco, but her name in this is Kaylee Cuco Sweeting, so I guess it was when she was married for that short period. The Wedding Singer. This, has a, this is a great film, and it has a um, cameo by Billy Idol. And uh, there you go, Adam Sandler. Sort of startish of his career, Drew Barrymore made quite a few films with Drew. Good little actress. Wedding video, an English comedy with Rufus Hound and uh, Lucy Punch and Robert Webb. What happened to Lucy Punch? Her in the middle. It's like her acting. Don't seem to do anything anymore. Uh, Weekend at Bernie's, fun film, fun movie. What the hell's this? Uh, <laughs> Welcome to Marwin. If you see my thumb there, I want to pick this up. Uh, anyway, um, great film. Directed by Robert Zemeckis. Not sure how he does it, how he did this film. Um, but I, sh I should watch the extras, really. It was quite late and I didn't have time to watch the extras. About a guy, he's beaten to a pulp by these thugs. Uh, because he liked to dress in women's shoes, of all things. He'd fit right in in Brighton, I tell you. Um, so he's beaten for, to a pulp. He's got a bit like uh, PTSD. And he... He's a photographer. He sets these uh, scenes up with like action men, Barbie dolls sort of thing in war scenarios, like uh, the English soldier being tortured by Nazis. And um, he takes a photograph, but the whole scene will play out in his head and like he's one of the characters. It's a really, I'm not doing it justice. Watch it, it's a good film. Welcome to Marwin, a Steve Carell. Uh, I'll do it around this way. Uh, what Women Want. Love this movie. It's a rom com of sorts. Uh, Mel Gibson, Helen Hunt. She's his boss in an executive, um, not executive um, an advertising agency. She gives him a task, or the whole team a task, to try out these products, women products. And what he does, he uh, accidentally electrocutes himself with a 
hair dryer in the bath, sips on some beads and stuff. And after the electrocution, he wakes up, he can hear what women are thinking and uh, uses this to his advantage. Just a good film of its time. And then I got the remake. Um, I'm pretty sure Movie Edge, you sent me this in the trade. Thank you. Um, yes, haven't seen it yet, but I'm guessing it's along the same things, but reverse, she's the protagonist. What we did on our holiday, bought this purely because Billy Connolly is in it. What to expect when you're expecting. This is a recent pickup. I've actually shown this one in my Monday pickup. Did I pick up last week or did I pick up this week? I've got no idea. Uh, what's your number? Is <clears throat> about how many sexual partners you've had. Anna Faris is in this and uh, Chris Evans. Chris Evans, Captain America. The Ass of America. What Lies Beneath. Harrison Ford film with Michelle Pfeiffer. It's... A ghost story and ghosts have a message in most films and this isn't any different good film quite creepy this is um, this is from Germany the disc doesn't say if it's region locked or not so you might want to check blu-ray.com and have a look what lies beneath I don't think that's out in any other country what if Daniel Radcliffe what just happened with Robert De Niro? What happens in Vegas? Ashton Kutcher and um, Cameron Diaz. I think, I can't remember a lot about it. Do they win like three million or something in a casino? Uh, they get drunk, get married, and then the they try to get it annulled. And the judge says you've got to live with her for a certain amount of time first. Pretty sure that's the basis of it. Whatever Happened to Baby Jane, brilliant film. It's uh, Betty Davis, Joan Crawford. It's about a child actress that uh, obviously later in life lives with her sister, Nutty. What's Eating Gilbert Grape with Leonardo DiCaprio, very young Leonardo DiCaprio and uh, Juliette Lewis, Johnny Depp. I could tell you what's eating Johnny, uh, um, what's eating Gilbert Grape, but I'm not gonna. Um, what Dreams May Come? A great movie. What doesn't kill you? We were soldiers, Mel Gibson. <clears throat> we want sex equality. This has an alternate title. When it was at the cinema in the UK, it was made in Dagnum. The uh, DVD is made in, that, uh, made in Dagnum. But it didn't get a Blu-ray release in this country. I think this is a French one. Pretty sure it's a French release. It's region B locked according to that might not be uh, but it's a great film about uh, women working in like the 70, 60s or 70s England and they had like no equality no rights they were being paid less and probably the still thing goes on today um, in a Dagnum car factory wet hot American summer I've not seen this one but I've heard it's like a, a national institute in America institution this one of those you've got to watch. I must watch it, really. Westworld. James Cameron got the idea for Terminator from this film. It is said. He is quoted as saying. And you can see why. It's got this... It's a theme park. It's a theme park. It's actually, it's three... Well, you've seen... The, it's been made a TV show out of it. Theme parks. You've got Westworld. You've got, like, a Roman world. And something like um, Knights and Swords world, if I remember rightly. But the film spends 99% of the time in Westworld. Your brain is a gunslinger. And the idea is you uh, you can shoot him as many times as you want. And obviously he'll die. If he goes to shoot you, he isn't going to kill you. Because his bullets are on like a fell safe thing. But every time he goes back to be repaired, he kind of remembers what's going on. And then he malfunctions and comes hunting for the guests. Great film. West is West. Sequel to East is East. I do have... Have I got that here? these yes on the other side of the room uh, yeah I'm gonna go and watch that blinded by the light uh, story of uh, an Indian family in England uh, we're the Millers oh, such a funny film you got that Will Porter <laughs> gets bit on the nut by a tarantula so funny. so funny you got Jennifer Aniston playing a stripper um, Jason Sudeikis as a drug one well all drug 
running to make money and they're trying to be like the ideal family they're all strangers to one another great film we'll never have paris again uh, big bang theory i bought it because of uh howard wallowitz is in this um simon helsberg and you've also got zachary quinton uh quinto the spock from the new films weird science this does actually have a arrow is it an arrow release now um so i'm considering upgrading i don't know i have to see the picture quality first i haven't seen it for a while welcome to the punch with the ever brilliant mark strong Welcome to the Jungle. Now this is uh, this got the same title as um, Jumanji, uh, the Welcome to the Jungle. So I was surprised they kept that as that title. I believe this has a different title in America, like the Fall Down or Run Down or something like that. It's uh, Dwayne the Rock. Actually, it's just the Rock in this. Dwayne Johnson and uh, Sean William Scott. When Harry met Sally, and it's a story of can a male and a female be friends with no sort of ulterior motives like him or her trying to get in bed with the other one good story good story brilliant that's Billy Crystal at his best there when in Rome and this is um, what's her name Christian Bell I do like her Christian Bell and it's at the famous fountain in Rome where you throw in a coin and you make a wish like for you know like if you've got a crush you say oh, I want a date Joanna Lumley. I mean, I don't, but um, yeah. Say that was your wish, and then she came along and she just fishes out some coins at the fountain because she's don't believe in it, and those people that have been wished upon fall in love with her. You know, it's one of those. It's a rom com, Australian release. I don't think they got a UK one again. When the game stands tall, and um, this is um, Jim Caviezel. Jim Caviezel. Apparently nobody worked with him anymore in Hollywood. Don't know why. When the Wind Blows. Uh, this has an alternate art cover on it. I'll just show you it. It's actually like when the bomb goes off. I don't know if you can see that. When the bomb's gone off. This is not Wallace and Gromit by any means. If you like Raymond Briggs who uh, wrote and drew this... Um, Ethel and Ernest. You did Ethel and Ernest, like a full link. Why didn't that come out on Blu-ray? Um, the Snowman. This isn't that. This is a lot darker. This is from 1980. Was 86? Can't remember. 86, I think. Could be 84. Yeah, it's uh, it's about living with nuclear war and the consequences and what you've been taught. <laughs> Duck and roll. Yeah, right. Uh, where eagles dare. Clint Eastwood, perfect. Uh, Richard Burton's in that as well. Uh, where the Wild Things Are. A perfect film. Uh, if you like rom-coms, this is an Australian release. Sandra Bullock, Bill Pullman. Uh, it's, a story, it's a great story. Uh, she she works in uh, Chicago on the L, L train in a, in a ticket booth. And every day, the, the man of her dreams or fantasies comes in, buys a ticket, just, doesn't even talk to her, just goes on to the tracks, uh, on tra onto the train station, catches the train, and goes out of her life. Every day he does this. Anyway, one day he gets mugged and falls onto the tracks. So she goes running out. Um, he's unconscious. She helps him. He ends up in the hospital, and she goes to visit him because she loves him from afar. Um, her family arrive and think that he's dating her. And she plays along with this and says, oh, it's a bit more than that. Uh, we're engaged. Actually, she doesn't say that. She says it to a nurse to go and see him. And the nurse tells the family that they're engaged. So it all gets blown out of proportion. Meanwhile, her brother, his brother comes to visit and she falls in love with him because she's actually talking to him. And uh, it's all set over Christmas. It's a great film. I'm not doing it justice. Whip It. Uh, this was directed by... I saw this at the cinema. Um, directed by... Drew Barrymore, and it's, uh, it's Drew Barrymore's in it, and Ellen Page. Does Ellen Page work anymore? Well, he does in TV. Whiplash, the brilliant um, J.K. Simmons, Miles Tanner. Whiskey Galore, this is a remake, I believe. Uh, it's set, I think, uh, on the Cornish coast during the war. Eddie Izzard is in this, and a uh, ship container of um, whiskey. 
happens to crash land on the shore. Whiskey Tango Foxtrot. This was um, an American import. Tina Fey is in that. Don't think that got a UK release. Could be wrong. The Whistleblower. Oh, White Heat. Um, this is a premium number, if I can see it. Uh, number 34 from 1949. James Cagney. I will eventually get to this alphabet of mine. I will eventually show you the premiums all together. White House Down. I love this movie. Uh, again, Hollywood. You made two films very similar on the same sort of subject, like Dante's Peak and Volcano and all those sort of things. I keep forgetting the other examples. Deep Impact, Armageddon. This one, um, White House Down and Olympus Has Fallen. Olympus Has Fallen has gone to make others you got. Uh, no, hang on. Yeah, Olympus Has Fallen, London Has Fallen, and then Angels Has Fallen, or something like that, which comes out in a few weeks. Good film. That's um, Channing Tatum and Jamie Foxx. Pretty similar story. The White House is taken over by a foreign force, and the president's in there, and Channing Tatum, who has to be there for an interview for the Secret Service, he goes into, well, he's already in there on a tour. Uh, with his daughter he goes in there to get the president out and save the day Hoo white man can't jump you can't say that nowadays white man can't jump uh wesley snipes woody harrelson great film white noise this film i don't think is out in the uk any uh i think it's out in america now could be out in america um michael keaton his wife dies I think it's his wife that dies. Yeah, his wife dies, and he tries to communicate with her through EVP, electronic voice phenomena, the the static sound. If you record it and then play it back, you might hear voices come through it, that kind of thing. He does, he does that. He records it, but then something else comes through with it. It's one of those. The sequel, the sequel's not out, but the sequel's good as well. White out with the beautiful. Kate Beckinsale. Who dares wins? Lewis Collins. He from what was the the professionals? Good film. And it's about the um, the true story of the uh, Iranian em embassy that was taken over by um, terrorists in the UK in the eighties. Actually, I remember that playing out on the TV. SAS. Great film. Who framed Roger Rabbit? Now this film is Marmite to me. Um, let me explain if you don't know what Marmite is. I love it sometimes. I hate it sometimes. Uh, at the moment I'm not a big fan of it. But a few weeks time I could love it again. It's, it's odd. It's the only film that in my collection that has that effect on me. But um, there you go. Who framed Robert, uh, Roger Rabbit? The whole truth. Keanu Reeves. Who's Afraid of Virginia Woolf? Elizabeth Taylor, Richard Burton. This is number 33 of the collection of a HMV Premium Collection for 1966. Who's Harry Crumb? Who indeed? Um, John Candy, that's who. And <laughs> hilarious. Well, the guy was a genius, uh, taken from us far too early. Um, just a bumbling idiot. Uh, why him? Brian Cranston, his daughter, is being dated by James Franco, a very, very rich person. Why him, indeed? Wicker Man. <laughs> I don't have... I thought I did have the Edward Woodward. You know, the bloke with the name that's a fart in a bathtub. Edward Woodward. Um, this is the Nicolas Cage one. Perfect film. Why did it burn? Why did it burn? Why did it burn? Sorry. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so many quotable ridiculous lines but I love this film love it you gotta see this film amazing movie now this Widows I was really <laughs> I'm saying that's brilliant I was disappointed by this I really was I was expecting a good movie and I didn't get it it is slow it is boring uh, I saw the twist come in a mile away. Um, yeah, I just thought it was a complete waste of talent. Michelle Rodriguez. Michelle Rodriguez. I'm watching Lost at the moment. Michelle Rodriguez. 
Uh, you've got Viola Davis, uh, Robert Duval. What a waste. Robert Duval, Liam Neeson. Yeah, I was I was bored senseless. But I will give it another go. I'll give it a year or so. Give it another go. I try to look at the good in all films. Apart from Bambi. Oh, God. Um, the Wife. The Wild. This is number 46. Uh, yeah, 46 of the Disney Classics. Wild with Reese with a spoon. Wild wild card. Here we go. Here we go. Right, Paul. Big Paulie. Fish your wild card back out your bloody Blu ray bin. Your Painland bin. Give it another go. This is a good movie. I saw your, your review. <laughs> I saw your review slating it. And um, I thought I'll give, it, I'll give it a go. I can't remember it being that bad. This is a good film. You got the guy at the start. He's um, it's obviously a setup because uh, um, what's her name? Sophia Vergara. I can't really read it. Sophia Vergara, the one with the great body, but the annoying voice. Her. Uh, sorry, that's a bit cruel. Um, you've got. Um, don't know. What I'm looking at. I can't see. Anyway, she's dating this little guy. This guy, I'm, like. He's thinning on top. In fact, he's wearing a, a toupee. And uh, he, it's, it's a setup in the bar. To make him look good, he's got to fight Jason Statham. S Jason Statham's coming on to Sophia. And he's protecting her. He rips off the toupee and he gets beaten up. That's the first fight. And then you've got the one where you've got the two thugs uh, working for the... like the, the I say he's not a drug lord. He's, he's just a, a crime syndicate. One of the top people in the crime syndicate. And... Um, he, uh, Jason Statham, kicks his uh, bodyguards' asses and uh, in a great fight and beats them all up. And then you had the fight in the around the back of the cafe where Jason Statham's armed with a spoon and like a, a dinner th knife. You got that one, and you've got the fight in the casino. This is a great film. Fish it back out the bin, give it another go. <laughs> I'm only kidding. If you don't like a film, that's fine. You know, if any of these you don't like, say that's fine because we all have different if we all like the same film there wouldn't be this much selection you'd only have like 10 different films uh wild child m uh wild child is emma roberts's niece um no julia roberts's niece that's emma roberts good film it's all out of the cinema wild hogs uh yes it's a bunch of like i'd say middle-aged men but you imply that you know when they're gonna die John Travolta, Tim Allen, Martin Lawrence, William H. Macy, they're all like 40 plus and they've all got like uh, Harley Davidsons and they think they're the business on their motorbikes. And uh, they go on a little trip, courtesy of uh, John Travolta, and um, they come across a real biker gang and it's, it's my, oh, Mr. Tommy is in this as well. That's me saying she's not in anything. Wildlife. That is... Um, Jake Gyllenhaal and Kerry Mulligan. Wild Target, pretty pretty decent film. You got Emily Blunt, Bill Nye, Rupert Grint, Martin Freeman, Rupert Everett, and um, Bill Nye is a hitman, and his next target is Emily Blunt. I'm not going to say any more on that. <clears throat> Wild Wild West. This is probably uh, Will Smith's, i will say, most hated film. But then you got that um, that one with Jaden Smith. He's taken knee in that one. After Earth, another Earth. Can't remember what's called now. He was, or in this film, he is a like a sheriff, and um, they're on a case. There's a guy played by Kenneth Branagh. He's got no legs at all. He's got like a spider Meccano set as a set of legs, and it's a great showdown between him. And Will Smith, he's racially aggressive to him, and he's like uh, slagging off his disability of having no legs. It's just such a fun scene, not taken too seriously. They and PC Willow with uh, that little fella. What's his name? <laughs> little fella, Warwick Davis. He's on every TV show. Um, Warwick Davis. That's not to say I don't like him because I, I really do like the guy. Uh, Warwick Davis, Val Kilmer great little adventure film Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory Oof. you should all know the story of this Willy Wonka he's a recluse 
he doesn't even have staff of sorts not so like your conventional staff he has oompa loompas right? like vertically challenged people orange wearing white jumpsuits very odd uh, he's running this chocolate factory he gives away four I think it's four tickets is it four tickets and a surprise or three tickets and a surprise one I can't remember now um, to come and visit his chocolate factory and Charlie Bucket wins one obviously because uh, it's Willy Wonka in a chocolate factory Charlie Bucket goes in and it's it's just mayhem inside And but the real creepy thing is is grandparents all share one bed and they've been in there for like 17 years in this one bed. It's creepy. The, it's much better than a Johnny Depp one. Uh, Winchester, the story of uh, the wife of the guy who invented the Winchester rifle. Uh, he's gone, he's dead, so she lives on her own in this house and the house is permanently being built on because she's afraid the spirits of the dead, uh, the dead spirits of the gun victims. I said that right? The victims of the, of the gun are coming back to get her. So she's permanently building this house with staircases that lead nowhere and rooms that have been boarded over and have windows go looking out on nothing. That is like a really strange house. Look at it. It's actually there, that house, Winchester. Great ghosty film with um, Helen Mirren, great actress, um, Jason Clark, who's in Terminator and Everest and whatnot, and Sarah Snook from Predestination. Good film. Wind in the Willows. The uh, original movie Wind Rise is, this is a good film with um, uh, the two from the Avengers films uh, Jeremy Renner uh, yeah Jeremy Renner and uh, the Olsen Olsen girl um, Elizabeth Olsen and it's a murder investigation but there's not a lot really goes on it's not it's a bit like Fargo there's not a lot going on it's sort of same sort of setting it's an investigation but it's really good good there's not a lot of dialogue not a lot of action but it's really good. I'm not selling it. Very good film. Check that out. Wind River. Wind Talkers. Nicholas Gage. Nicholas Gage. Winter's Bone. Oh, this is the one that sort of introduced us to uh, Jennifer Lawrence. Made her, made her the star she is. The Witch. Set in old England. Very old. In fact, um, some people complain that they can't understand what they're saying. And you have to watch a film by subtitles, apparently. Witches of Eastwick. The scene in this with the chair, with the woman throwing up the chair is. I can't watch that scene. With Nell and I. Uh, it's uh, Richard Grant. I'm not a massive fan of, but he did kind of win me round last Oscars because he was. It's in, he's quite a nice guy. And uh, you got Richard. Um, what's his name? I even see it. Richard Griffiths. The guy who was Harry Potter's uncle, big guy. Witness protection with Larry the Cable Guy. Without men, this is a recent pickup. I've not seen it yet. Uh, it is Eva Longoria and Christian Slater. I'll give Christian Slater another go because I haven't seen many of his films, recent films of late. Without a paddle, comedy, quite a good one as well. Matthew Lidd in this and uh, Dax Shepard and Seth Green good one I think it's a, it was a sequel to that which I used to have on DVD without a clue this is um, yeah, believe it or not this is a blu-ray you know don't look like it it's like one of those 101 film cases funny this is a French import and it's just it's about an inept um, Sherlock Holmes the brains of the outfit is Ben Kingsley plays Watson very very funny last pile and you can probably see him from here uh, witness this is Harrison Ford film Kay Kelly McGillis is in this as well this is a story of uh, a person being put in witness protection to hide them and it, they're living with the Amish it's, it's a good film good tense thriller Wizard of Oz you've got Bert La uh, sort of Bolger isn't it um, I always forget his name Jack Haley, Ray Bolger as Tin Man, uh, the Cowardly Lion, and um, the Scarecrow. You've also got Dorothy, brilliant Judy Garland. Great song, great film. I've not seen the 3D yet though, but I've heard it's really good. All know the story of The Wizard of Oz. Wolf Children. Wolf Creek. Now this is um, surprisingly scary because it's based on a true story, which is very disturbing. 
as is this one, uh, Wolf of Wall Street. This is um, Jordan Belfort. It's the story of Jordan Belfort, and it's he's a corrupt um, stockbroker and uh, very corrupt. And it's a time when this, you know, made millions, absolute millions, and it was like money was nothing to them. It was all about the thrill. And you have uh, Margaret Robbie in that as well. And what's his name? Um, I forget his name. I've been talking about him as well. Jonah Hill. Jonah Hill. Wolfman. I love this adaptation of uh, werewolf film. This is um, Benito del Toro. You've got Anthony Hopkins brilliant in this. Emily Blunt as Benito's love interest. Hugo Weaving is like a, a detective trying to find out uh, who's killing these people. Doesn't think about werewolf and thing, even though they're like a local legends are telling him. Very, very atmospheric. I love it. Wolverine. Uh, I enjoyed this. It should be with the X Men. No, no, I'm going to keep it in the W's. Um, Wolverine. Good film, I thought. Women, oh, the woman in black, Daniel Radcliffe. This is as creepy as hell. I thought this makes this got a couple of jump scares in this. Um, yeah, uh, just creepy, very creepy. And again, ghosts have a message, or the, you know, in that one. Woman in black, two, or the uh, the angel of death. Just woman in black, angel of death. Um, I've not seen the sequel. I need to get onto the sequel. Woman in gold. I did a movie location sort of uh, shooting a, a week or two ago of uh, Sean Airport and apparently that's featured in this film The Women Wonder I thought this was a, a lovely film um, Julia Roberts and Owen Wilson are parents to a young girl and a young boy and the young boy has like a facial disfigurement so he wears his astronaut's helmet all the time and it gets to the age where he has to join regular school it's all about that transition good movie um, as you would expect the daughter kind of gets overlooked in the relationship because the boy has all the attention so it's, it's sad in some respects moving in others Wonder Will uh, you've got this is directed by Woody Allison uh, Woody House <laughs> no it's not it's directed by Woody Allen and it stars uh, Justin Timberlake, Kate Winslet. It's German, we please. The American one is region locked. And there is no uh, English release of that. Wonder Woman. Uh, I love this film too. You've got uh, Gal Gadot in this. And um, what's his name? Chris Pine. Chris Pine. He with the massive head for his body. Um, it's just head to me every time I see it his head looks too big for the body I could talk uh, yes it's a good superhero movie well it's better than a good one it's a really good one origin story I love origin stories Wonderstruck Woodlawn Working Girl again Harrison Ford this time with Melanie Griffith and uh, Sigourney Weaver good film very good World Trade Center. This is uh, quite a difficult watch. Um, purely because of the subject matter. It's uh, uh, Nicolas Cage. You've got Michael Penner in this. Um, uh, what's his name? Michael Shannon? I'm thinking it's Michael Shannon. you got a whole host of people in this, obviously. Um, Maggie Gyllenhaal. It's Oliver Stone film. Obviously, it's around the trade trade centres uh, when they were struck by the planes, and it's the fire brigade and the police and all that going in. But it really concentrates on the fire brigade going in when the buildings are coming down. Awful. When that scene when it's coming down, my goodness, terrible, terrible thing that actually happened. World War Z. Yes, um, World War Z, World War Z, if you prefer. Uh, Brad Pitt. God, I love this film. It's such a good film. Um, you got Doctor Who in this. Um, Grapaldi. What's his first name? Some Grapaldi. Not Lewis. That's his son. Um, I forget what his name is. Some Grapaldi. He plays one of the uh, the doctors in the or scientists in the uh, facility toward the end. That's beside the point. It's the story of uh, an outbreak of. 
like a zombie plague but they're really fast really fast in this these zombies and the bloody idiot woman who's singing when they're in uh, Jerusalem and they've got the wall all around the city and she's singing on a microphone and they're climbing up the walls and you can see them coming up she's still singing and it's attracting them I'll have tossed her over the bloody wall ever anyway that's just me uh, world world's end to me now this is controversial this is my favorite of the Cornetto trilogy I know I know I know Simon Pegg Nick Frost um, amongst others alien invasion yeah I'm gonna call it an alien robot invasion <laughs> very very good and then for me it's hot fuzz and then Shaun of the Dead and I know you're probably thinking what don't like Shaun of the Dead I love Shaun of the Dead it's a very close race indeed there's not a lot in it if anything and if Shaun of the Dead was on TV I'd watch it now you know it's not like oh, I don't like them I love them all just for some reason that takes the lead world's fastest Indian that's referring to the motorbike not an Indian. Um, yeah, it's uh, Anthony Hopkins. Wrath of the Titans. Good film. I love this kind of film. Um, the first one, The Clash of the Titans in 3D. It's not worth it. It's not worth getting in 3D. I do have it. I'm going to keep it and I will watch it in 3D again. But it's not worth it. It's like, are these glasses working? They're this, on the other hand, very good 3D. Wreck It Ralph. I saw this at the cinema. I had a migraine. It was like it was a nightmare. The the noise of the art like the arcade and the lights. It was killing me. And um I haven't seen it since. But I will watch it. I will watch it. Oh that is number fifty one of the Disney classics. Now unlike Disney, I think this is the first one, I could be mistaken. They have a sequel, which is also a classic. I don't think they've done that on any other one. This is number 56, I'm thinking. Yeah, 56. The classics. It's Wreck-It Ralph. Why isn't this in the R's, I'm, I'm ask, uh, you're asking me? Well, that's because it's a sequel. I'm trying to get my sequels together. There you go. And they're both classics. Um, Ralph Breaks Internet. The Wrestler with uh, Mickey Rourke. Mickey Rourke, great actor. Wrinkle in Time. This did not get a UK release, and uh, this is region free. Oprah Winfrey. The last three. Wrinkles. I don't know if this is, any of these are out of sync. Uh, the wrinkles. No, I think that's right. Wrinkles. Uh, animated film. Wrong Man. Uh, Henry Fonda and Vera Miles. This is HMV Premium number 66 from 1956. And the last. Again, <laughs> get on and show it. Uh, Hollywood, you did the the Olympus has fallen, White House down, and Dante's Peak in the other one, volcano. You did Tombstone, and this one. Don't know why they do it, but I'm glad you did. Uh, Wyatt Earp. I don't think you can see that cover. Wyatt Earp. That is Kevin Costner right there. Brilliant actor. I went and saw because these were both at the cinema. I think roughly the same time. I saw Tombstone. I didn't see this one. I wish I'd seen this one as well. Love Tombstone. This is 190 minutes. And Kevin Costner does long films. Let me know if you've seen it. Let me know if you've seen any of those. If you have any recommendations. I'm going to go through and put them all on the list. And see to them from the age. I'll go through them one day and write down all your recommendations. Thank you so much for watching the W's. The Wibbly Wobbly Wobbly's. Thanks so much for watching. Take it easy. Um... See you in the next video. Bye-bye.